something to do with it. <laughs> Port Adelaide were the other side. Uh, clearly, they've had the staggers over the last should few have been weeks. Beaten. And they should have yep, lost the match. Yep. It was extraordinary stuff to see. And this is a team that we saw play at a breakneck speed for the first half of the season. And I think we all admired the brand they were playing. Mm. Well, I saw them a couple of weeks ago against Richmond when they were severely pressured mm. and it broke down and they couldn't get the run up and going. And then I saw it again in the bits and pieces that I saw in the game against Melbourne. I don't know what's going wrong with them. But no. they, they don't have that same dare, do they, that they showed early in the season? It comes down to individuals. We'll talk about the collective shortly. But uh, on the weekend, Melbourne, they targeted some of their uh, very best players. The first one was Boak. He has had a magnificent season, uh, Travis yeah. Boak, but uh, his numbers were off on the weekend. You can see their disposals down to uh, 19. That was the second fewest he's had in 2014. The other one, I think, uh, was Broadbent. He's been a star for them uh, right bank, through yeah. the year yeah. off half back. And I don't think they necessarily locked down too hard on uh, Matty Broadbent, but uh, he was one that didn't deliver. Matthew Loby's not playing as well as he did. And the other one I want to ask you about, your favourite, Wingard. He's, he's dropped off. Uh, Hamish Hartlett, he's another yep. one. Look at the comparison between uh, the first half of the season and the, the last four or five matches. A significant player that uh, has really uh, dropped off. But and why Jared have these, Why have all these players dropped off, Jared? Is it the toll that it takes, the style of football that they play? I think uh, what's happening, uh, and there's your man, yep. Mike, uh, Chad Wingard. He's gone from an All-Australian down to just a bit contributor. He's yep. still got the star quality, but it's it's... Staccato is rather it, than being consistent. Is it domino effect? If, if say, Loby doesn't do as well in the ruck or one of the key midfielders is down like Boat, do the others follow suit because they don't get the supply? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you, li you like your leaders to be playing well because they do tend to drag a lot of players along with them. But I had got to the stage where I respected this Port team so much I thought they had contributors everywhere mm. and they didn't rely just on one or two players. It just seems that they need those key on-field leads to be playing mm. well, don't they? Maybe it's just the fact that they've got about 24 players and they've had two major outs in defence, and so the domino theory just weakens them everywhere, and the, the third and fourth defenders are now playing on one and two. One guy, though, that has been a star, I think, He's since we've another love child of yours, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> I love Ollie Wines. Yeah. I think that uh, right now his numbers stack up in his second year with some of the greats of the game, but uh, this is the sort of stuff that I think means that this kid's going to be a, a career star for them. he probably end up captain. And he gets the job done when it needs to be done, and he's consistent right throughout. I love the fact that he plays like a really mature player. It, yep. it doesn't matter what the uh, situation is or what the sequence of events that's unfolding is or the stage of the game. He plays the same way all the time. Well, comparing to some of the greats of the game, when we use uh, champion data rankings points, uh, Chris Judd, I think, probably was one of the most mature players we've ever seen in his uh, first couple of years. He ranked 110. That's all Australian numbers for uh, a second-year player. Incredible. Del, Del Sando, five. Ollie Wines comes in at uh, 104. They're, they're big numbers, Mike. And uh, Jack McRae is also it's, it's pretty good impressive. good company, isn't it? Now, like, he was born to play league footy, Wines, wasn't yeah. he? Like, he's strong. He, he, play, he was physical enough from his first game. But he, as you said, that maturity thing, he knows his way around, doesn't he? Oh, I love the way he plays. And mm. the, the other thing I'm really happy to report, Jared, is that we have a lot of fans that watch this show. And I'm now convinced more than ever that the umpires are watching this show. <laughs> Why is that? Now, if you recall a couple of weeks ago, we had Kane Corns on as a guest, and he was, he was a terrific chat. Yeah. And we showed this incident yes. where Pittard already had the ball out of the bag in his hands as the uh, Adelaide Crow is having a shot for goal, saw it missing. Before it's even gone through, he's thrown it to Broadbent, and they go coast to coast mm -hmm. and kick a goal. Well, they're trying to do it again on the weekend, and they get pinged. So here's uh, Mackenzie having a shot for goal. It's actually, this time it's Jonas, is next to the ball bag and you've got uh, Pittard in the square waiting for the pill. There it is, he throws it to him. Put the footy back. You can't <laughs> grab it out before the signal, it's all clear. <laughs> you can't put the footy out before the signal. What he's also saying is he didn't think Geordie McKenzie could kick the goal. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they're onto him, they've cottoned onto it. They saw what we exposed mm. a couple of weeks ago and they've pulled him up.